All right, folks, we are back here on WLT 1370 AM. Scott and the Ralph, this is an answer Friday. I'm here flying solo 219-885-1371. That number again is 219-885-1371. And while we're talking about labor issues and talking about how the United States as a country fails its workers, the corporate state is at it again. The giant vampire squid, I guess. <laughs> Uh, as uh, Taibi called it, but um, Kellogg this time has said that they are hiring new permanent workers for cereal plants to replace the union employees who have been on strike for the past two months. The Kellogg strike began on October 5th with 1,400 employees across the company's four plants that make breakfast cereal. This week, when the union rejected a deal after two months of negotiating, Kellogg's announced it will hire permanent replacement workers. One of the biggest issues for striking workers is Kellogg's two-tiered compensation system. Employees who are hired before 2015 have their own higher wage scale and better benefits. Now, the union, which is called the Bakery Confectionery, tobacco workers and grain millers union say that they wanted to do away with that system or at least create a way for newer employees to eventually access better pay. So basically what they're saying is what, what Kellogg is doing is what lots of companies are doing like John Deere. And you even see it here at the steel mills in this country, in this uh, area where you have all these workers who are hired over the past 30, 40, 50 years back when people actually respected workers in this country and they made a living wage and they were protected by labor unions, or they're trying to essentially say, all you guys who got used to that, you're getting old, you're dying, you're retiring, so you're going to be the last generation to have any of those benefits. You're going to be the last ones to have vacation time, you're going to be the last ones to have, you know, a, a, a functioning and efficient health care plan. You're going to be the last ones to be able to move up and wage as you, the, as you acquire seniority. And God bless these workers, these laborers. They said, no, that's not right. That is not right. We worked for generations to earn those benefits for all workers, not just of a certain generation. We want if our kids or our grandkids work here to have the opportunities for the same benefits for the same pay scale that we had. We fought for that. Our fathers fought for that. Our grandfathers fought for that. Here in the city of Gary, Indiana, learn about, a, about Gary, Indiana's labor history. People literally shed blood and died so that workers in these steel mills and these factories could have rights and living wages and health insurance plans and vacation time and sick leave. Literally died. Literally had mobs sicked on them by the, the big bosses at U.S. Steel and at other factories, other companies, and not just here in, in, in this region, around the country. America's labor history is very bloody. If you get the opportunity to learn about it, learn about it. Read as much as you can about it. And it'll help you understand stories like this. Now, last week, the union and the company reached a tentative five-year deal with raises for employees and a pathway to move between pay tiers. But the, the union workers overwhelmingly voted to reject that deal. So the company's plants in Omaha, Nebraska, Memphis, Tennessee, Michigan, and Pennsylvania have been running with temporary workers, which is why you can still buy Frosted Flakes and Fruit Loops at the store. 
But now the company says it will hire new permanent workers to replace the union members who are on strike. Now, President Biden said he was, quote, unquote, deeply troubled by the company's plan to hire new workers, calling it an existential attack on the union. I wonder if he's going to do a damn thing about it, you know, with him being the president and all and having the ability to, you know, write, use executive orders for all, you know, or use his bully pulpit as the president to go down there and advocate on behalf of workers. Oh, <laughs> who am I kidding? He's a Democrat. He's not going to do anything. He's going to get in line and capitulate just like that last sellout Democrat they had. You know, the Uncle Tom in a suit, that guy. He even said that he would support legislation to ban the practice. We will see. The strikes have been supported by local donations of food and national donations of money to strike funds to help the striking workers make ends meet. And now in another show of solidarity, social media users have flooded the job listings on Kellogg's website with fake applications, hoping to clog up their system. God bless these Zoomers, these generation Zoomers on TikTok who are responsible for that, uh, putting a cog in the machine, clogging up uh, Kellogg's website, basically, so that it's harder for them to replace the workers. And let me just say this. We all give the younger generation a lot of stick. A lot of stick, right? A lot of us do. And I'm, I'm no different. I'm a millennial. I make fun of the Zoomers all the time, okay? I even make fun of other millennials like myself who are younger than me, okay? But one thing I have noticed about social media, and this is why so many politicians have done their best try to rein it in and sort of reel back the amount of freedom that people have had on these platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, is that there are a lot of young people who are becoming more labor conscious, who are becoming more class conscious, who are becoming more racially conscious. There are a lot of people who are very radical on, on platforms like Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. They are using the machine of the establishment to essentially circumvent the establishment and and I'm, I'm here for it so all those kids on tiktok who got together and decided they were going to hack in the kellogg system you have scott cannon uh the chemist lives god bless the working class you have me you have my support good for you now a lot of people may say look man it's just business kellogg's is a business you know, they probably have to save money. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, man. They probably lost money. They probably, uh, they're probably barely getting by. That's completely false. Completely false. In North America, the operating profits of Kellogg's Increased 21% in 2020 to 1.47 billion. Money, money, money. Yes. Lots of money, money, money. Now, since this is a nationwide strike, the union has asked everyone to refrain from buying these following products. Listen to me now. This is union country right here. Gary, East Chicago, Hammond, all, all of, you know, this, the Tri-Cities areas, all the Whiting, south side of Chicago. I know you, I know you guys out there listening on the south side of Chicago, Hagwish. So listen up. These are the products that the union is asking us to refrain from buying. Rice Krispies. Raisin Bran, Fruit Loops, Corn Flakes. Now you can't have your Corn Flakes. Frosted Flakes, Frosted Mini Wheats, 
shredded wheat. Cheese it. Pop tarts. And Pringles. I'm going to go through that list again. In support of the striking laborers at Kellogg's, the following product should be at least, you know, uh, it, 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 at least cut back at least. But I, I'm personally, I'm not buying any of these. I got to go without my Pringles, then so be it. Rice Krispies, Raisin Bran, Fruit Loops, Corn Flakes, Frosted Flakes, Frosted Mini Wheats, Shredded Wheat, Cheese Its, Pop Tarts, and Pringles. I want to give uh, a lot of props to uh, Susan Sarandon, ironically. That Susan Sarandon, yes, the actress who liked brought to light a lot of these products that uh, Kellogg's makes. Uh, she's a really good follow on Twitter. I know the, the sellout corporate liberals, a lot of them hate Susan Sarandon. They blame her and all of us Jill Stein voters for Trump getting elected in 2016. Uh, I say it was Hillary's fault for being a terrible candidate and liberals fault for selling out the working class in the first place which is why no one respects you or, or wants to vote for you. Uh, but a lot of people choose to blame Susan Sarandon and all of us Stein supporters. But I, I, I believe that she actually is somebody who cares about the issues of labor. So props to her for, uh, for putting out this list. I, uh, I found it. And, and these items... Rice Krispies, Raisin Bran, Fruit Loops, Corn Flakes, Frosted Flakes, Frosted Mini Wheats, Shredded Wheat, Cheese, Pop Tarts, Pringles. These are off my shopping list. These are off my shopping list until they rehire those workers and pay them a living wage.